now, the general weather around Alaska. Welcome everyone to Alaska Weather. I'm meteorologist Peter Chan coming to you from the National Weather Service in Alaska region on this Friday, the 4th of July, 2025. And 4th of July is certainly living up to a big bang in terms of the heat and the fire potential. We have extreme fire danger across much of central and the eastern interior. There are red flag warnings in effect uh, through late Saturday night, pre-dawn of Sunday morning. We also have heat advisories for areas of the central, even northern interior, 70s, 80s, even a few spots up around 90 degrees. It looks like today will probably end up being the hottest of the days with the greatest extent. Meanwhile, a bearing low in front is bringing some rain and breezy conditions along areas of Bristol Bay, the Alaska Peninsula, and some of that moisture is going to push up into the Western Gulf Saturday and spread further eastward into the Panhandle for later this weekend, Sunday into Monday, getting pretty soggy there around Yakutat and in through the Panhandle. And then a big cool down is going to happen across the northern half of the mainland early next week, later Monday into Tuesday. A strong cold front coming in off the Arctic Ocean is going to cause this heat, 70s and 80s, to just collapse and big, probably at least 25 degree temperature drop coming up for a number of these areas along the North Slope and Brooks Range. So Atkasuk up there in uh, the northwest portion uh, there, the North Slope, uh, sunny and hot, 75 degrees, at least by their standards for uh, the summertime. Meanwhile, in the east central interior, we have a number of fires uh, that are active. Smoky haze at central there, only 82 degrees. It's that smoke keeping the temperature down. Otherwise, it'd be up easily up, probably approaching 90. And Homer, Beautiful, sunny, warm weekend, 64 degrees there. You can see the spit uh, out there toward the Cook Inlet. And then Cake in the central, south central panhandle, partly sunny, 66 degrees, just a few uh, higher based uh, stratocumulus or alto cumulus clouds. But here, here's where we have the issues. In red are the red flag warnings. And there are extreme fire uh, conditions there because of the hot temperatures, Low humidities as low as 20 to 30 percent. And we're not so much looking at thunderstorms and lightning as it's just the very dry condition. So really anybody here in the interior, don't even mess around with fireworks or anything that could throw a spark because this is very, very dangerous uh, fire weather conditions. Like it doesn't take much to get a fire going. And once it gets going, it just can take off. We also have heat advisories that extend around from north of Fairbanks through the central interior along the uh, Yukon, Tanana uh, rivers, and then on up uh, into the Seward Peninsula surrounding Norton Sound and the uh, western central Brooks Range and even uh, bleeding over there into parts of the North Slope. High 70s and 80s common here. Again, a few spots could hit 90 degrees. And so that these heat advisories will be in effect until 10 p.m. Saturday. The red flag warnings for the central eastern interior in effect until 1 a.m. Sunday morning. The latest fire weather update from the Alaska Interagency Coordination Center. These are provided by Jacob. He's been working really hard this season to give us the most pertinent information. Now that we are in such an active period of fire weather, today should be the hottest and driest conditions of this cycle. And we do expect temperatures and uh, relative humidities to begin to come down as we go into next week. But extreme fire activity in the interior will continue to tax the firefighting resources that are out there now. And smoke has brought air quality and visibility down uh, around Fairbanks, Tanana, you saw there at Central. So again, we're in the midst of an uh, active period of fire weather. The hot and dry weekend uh, transition into a cooler and damper start to the week. That's that cold front that'll be coming down northwest to southeast from off the Arctic Ocean. And precipitation will become more abundant. Uh, but at this point, significant or really soaking rains will be rather spotty. So not enough to broad brush and take care of a, a large area of uh, dry conditions. So here is the grass adjective. Extreme fire uh, danger there, south side of the Brooks Range, middle upper Yukon, Tanana Valleys. That's where these current uh, red flag warnings are in effect. You throw in the spruce and you can see the same area. So any of these areas you see in, in red, given this big high pressure sitting right up over this region, 
that sets the stage. You have, do have some easterly winds with hot temperatures and low humidities, bad combination, especially the 4th of July. So anyone up through these regions, refrain from using any fire or fireworks, anything like that that could throw a spark, tools, what have you, because this is really dangerous. There's already been a, a number of evacuations uh, in some of these rural cabin settings and stuff where these fires are, are undergoing, uh, ongoing. And looking at the satellite imagery, so we have clear skies, dry conditions up there, all across uh, the central northern mainland. We do have a little bit of a low here, just west-southwest of uh, Haida Gwaii. We have the low out here in the southeast bearing, a front extending eastward, pushing up into the Alaska Peninsula. And eventually the energy from this system is just gonna translate off toward the east and northeast up into the western Gulf. And that's gonna force this front and moisture all up along the Gulf Coast and into the panhandle by Sunday and Monday, rather soggy again here. Today it's been mostly cloudy, generally speaking, a few breaks, some areas getting some sun, but definitely a wetter pattern emerging for the Gulf Coast and especially panhandle, northeastern Gulf Coast, back through Yakutat, Sunday into Monday. And here's the surface weather map late tonight into Saturday morning. Here's that weak low west-southwest of Haida Gwaii. Here's the low in uh, the southeast bearing just uh, north of the Alaska Peninsula and uh, eastern Aleutians. It's going to continue the energy east, northeastward up here into the western Gulf as we go into Saturday and uh, Sunday. Thermal low residing here in the central interior being caused by the warm temperatures. And then weak high pressure either side, eastern Russia around the Gulf of Anadir and another one up here in northwest Canada. For Saturday afternoon, we have the thermal low. There could be a few showers and thunderstorms along the periphery of this. The main high up here is suppressing thunderstorm development, but still very warm conditions expected Saturday and into Sunday. Here comes what's left that low in the secluded front, push it into Sunday, and we see the energy translates up into the western gulf just off the Kenai uh, Peninsula, but this Weakening front will push more rain showers all up along, uh, especially northeastern Gulf Coast into the Panhandle. A little breezy conditions and uh, showers or steadier rain certainly possible there. We should start to see more in the way some scattered uh, showers and storms across areas of the central southern interior. And then as we go into Monday, here comes that cold front coming in from the north and west. The leading edge pushing to along the spine of the Brooks Range by Monday afternoon. It'll continue heading east-southeastward. And in fact, by the time we get into Tuesday morning, there could be some wet snow develop along the spine there of the Brooks Range and the higher elevations uh, where the air will be a bit colder. Otherwise, just kind of this uh, couple of lows lingering into the Gulf, into the North Pacific. So this is going to keep uh, showery and cooler weather going along the Gulf Coast and Panhandle for early in the week. So here are the temperatures, lows tonight, 62 Fairbanks, 60 Fort Yukon, even 62 as you get on over toward uh, Shugnuck and Ambler. Uh, it's it's, good, it's gonna be one, probably the mildest, warmest nights we see this, the, this summer. And certainly looking at highs again on Saturday afternoon, 80s, a few spots could hit 90. And this is encompassing the Brooks Range areas of the North Slope into the Seward Peninsula. Hottest temperatures though, Again, middle, middle upper Yukon valleys coming up through the lower half of the Tanana Valley. Uh, as we look down in the south central, there may be a few more clouds keeping the temperatures down a little bit, but I'd still say some spots will hit or just break 70. Panhandle generally staying in the 60s. Sunday morning lows still around 60 Fort Yukon on over to uh, Fairbanks, a few spots out here even uh, in the middle Yukon and northward up onto the south slopes of the Brooks Range may see lows stay above 60 for uh, Sunday morning early there and then generally in the 50s along the Panhandle and anywhere from upper 40s to lower mid 50s in south central 40s up along the immediate west coast through the Bering Strait St. Lawrence down to St. Matthew or I mean uh, St. Paul and then also in through the Aleutians and notice temperatures on Sunday, not quite as hot, but still some areas could reach mid to maybe upper 80s, but mid 80s. Uh, again, Fort Yukon uh, extending uh, westward through Bettles toward Ambler. And again, we're gonna start to get a few more clouds and things that, that, that the heat will have peaked 
on Friday afternoon and Saturday afternoon. So looking at the temperature outlook here as we approach mid-month, July 10th through the 14th. This is the Climate Prediction Center 6 to 10 day temperature outlook. Pretty good likelihood that temperatures are going to end up below normal across the northeastern half of the mainland into the panhandle with below normal temperatures also possible through the southwest into the Alaska Peninsula, but the, the greatest likelihood in the northern eastern central mainland into the panhandle. And then precipitation for July 10th through the 14th, the outlook is indicating that wetter than normal conditions across the panhandle, especially the southern panhandle, Juneau down through uh, Ketchikan, and perhaps above normal precipitation, the southeast mainland, including the Copper River uh, Valley, uh, the eastern Alaska range up into the upper half of the Tanana Valley. So that's the way things are shaping up with the pattern, the way it may be unfolding here as we approach mid-month.